Hello everyone and welcome to today's Bible class as we continue studying in the Old Testament at the end of the time of Judges before the time of the Kings. We're kind of picking up with the story of Samuel and Eli and Eli's sons and the people of Israel as a whole. In fact, today's story is going to cover something dealing with Israel and their relationship with God. How did God show that he was with them, against them? How did he show his power? It's a great story, and I look forward to going through it with you here in just a little bit. But to start off today, let's sing a few songs together. Let's start with, I've Got Confidence. I've got confidence. My Lord is going to see me through, no matter what the case may be. My Lord is going to be there for me because quiet, I've got confidence. My Lord is going to see me through, no matter what the case may be. My Lord is going to be there with me because loud, I've got confidence. My Lord is going to see me through, no matter what the case may be. My Lord is going to be there with me. All right, how about the steadfast love of the Lord? The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. Therefore I will hope in Him. Yes, it's so great to hope in Jesus, in our God who does love us no matter what. And we're going to hear a lot about a time where the Israelites might have felt like God didn't love them, but He continues to show just how much he actually does. Let's sing one more song. How about we sing, Humble Yourself in the Sight of the Lord? And if you want to do the echo part, that would be great. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And he will lift you up. And he will lift you up. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. That saved a wretch like me. So humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And he will lift you up. And he will lift you up. Yeah. So maybe if you don't know exactly what humble means, that would be a great conversation to have with your parents today. But in this story, we see a time where the Israelites weren't being quite so humble or trusting fully in God or showing that they trusted him by following his commands. And because of that, some bad things happened to them. But in the end, they do humble themselves. In fact, many other people are humbled by God. So let's join our story today. It comes from the book of 1 Samuel, chapters 4 through 6. I hope you enjoy today's story, but more importantly, I want you to be looking out for ways that God shows his power 
Who is being humble and how great does God prove himself to be? Hi friends, I'm Megan and this is Jesse. Jesse. Oh, hi. Sorry, Megan. I was just counting this money. <laughs> no problem. Are you uh, are you saving your money for something exciting? No. I have to pay for a statue. A statue? Why? Well, I was riding my new Galactic Theater Research 20-inch trail bike. I was zooming around like lightning. I was going so fast, Megan, you could barely see me. But then I ran into my mom's statue in her garden, and I knocked it over, and its head fell off. Oh, that's pretty bad. Yeah, I'm having to do extra chillers to pay for a new one. Ah, oh, bummer. But guess what? Look, a statue actually fell over in today's Bible story. But this statue didn't get hit by a bike. Listen to our Bible story to hear what made this statue fall over. The people of Israel and the Philistines did not get along. The Israelites fought a battle against the Philistines and the Philistines won. The Israelites were confused. Why had God allowed them to lose? The Israelites made a plan to take the Ark of God to the battle. The Ark of God was a beautiful box from the tabernacle that reminded the people that God was with them. They thought the Ark might help them win the battle. Eli's sons, the priests, took the Ark of the Covenant to the Israelites' camp. When the army of Israelites saw the Ark, they shouted with joy. Surely they would win the battle now. The Israelites fought the battle, but the Philistines won again. Many Israelites died, including Eli's two sons, and the Philistines captured the Ark of God. The Philistines took the Ark of God to a temple where they worshiped Dagon, a false god. They put the ark next to a statue of Dagon. The next morning, the Philistines went into the temple and saw that Dagon's statue was face down in front of the ark. They set the statue back up. The next day, it was face down again and its heads and hands were broken off. God punished the people living in the city where the ark of God was. God made them really sick. <laughs> The people in that city wanted to get rid of the ark. When they moved the ark to another city, everyone in that city got sick. So they moved the ark to a third city. Then everyone in that city got sick as well. The Philistines were afraid. They didn't want God to punish them anymore. So they decided to return the ark along with gifts of gold to show they were sorry for taking it. The people hitched two cows to a cart and put the ark on the cart. The cows moved the ark down the road until the ark of God was back with the Israelites, where it belonged. The ark of God reminded the Israelites that God was with them. Many years later, God gave his people something even better to remind them that he was with them. God sent his son, Jesus. One of Jesus' names is Emmanuel, which means God with us. Like I said, today's story is truly amazing. Battles with victory and defeat, sickness, plague, statues that are being broken, it's an amazing thing to see how many ways God can display his power. And so that brings us to our question that we've gone through several times now. Is there anything greater than our God? No. Is there anything more powerful than him? No. Does he show his loving faithfulness to his people no matter what? 
Yes, sometimes there's consequences, but he still shows his love and care for them. So let's go over our focus verse that comes again from Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 6. It says, There is none like you, O Lord. You are great, and your name is great in might. Let's do it one more time. Go ahead and say it out loud with me. There is none like you, O Lord. You are great, and your name is great in might. You see, in the story, the people who were fighting against the Israelites, the Philistines, they thought their God was great, especially when they won the battle, when they defeated this supposed to be strong army from Israel. And so they thought their God, Dagon, was so strong that he was greater than Israel's God. The Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant captive and carried it back but even then, God proved that though they had won the battle, they had not defeated him. The Ark of the Covenant was an amazing thing that God had asked his people to build. He had told them, this is what I want you to do in order to keep my spirit, in order to keep my presence with you. And there's a lot of things that went along with that that I'm going to talk about later for you to do with your parents. But it's important to know even though God dwelled within this Ark of the Covenant that was first in the tabernacle and later in his temple, God doesn't just dwell in one object any longer. In fact, God is everywhere. God dwells throughout his creation, especially now that his son has come and gone back with him. God literally came in bodily form and dwelt among us. We talked about that through the month of December, how Jesus was Emmanuel, God with us. Once again, is anything greater than our God? Was Dagon greater than God? No. And I pray that we will continue to trust in his power and might and protection whatever may be happening in our life. We're going to do a little bit of review, and then I'm going to go over something that I would like for you and your family to do together as you do a little deeper discussion about the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, so first question of our review. What happened to the Ark of God when the Israelites took it into battle? The Philistines captured it! Mr. Alligator? Yeah! Are you in here? Well, yeah. Do you want to come out and do the review with us? Yeah, that'd be great. Would y'all be okay if Mr. Alligator comes out and does the review with us? All right. Come on out, Mr. Alligator. Oh, oh. Hey, everybody. It's so good to be here again. I loved listening to today's story. Battles and... All that crazy stuff that happens with a broken statue. Whoa. Okay, anyway, um, you can get back to the questions. Okay, so maybe why don't we start back with that first one again? Yeah, I answered it, but go ahead, go ahead, do it again. Okay, so here it is again for those of you out there. What happened to the Ark of God when the Israelites took it into battle? Okay, so again, the answer was... The Philistines took it captive. <gasps> it was a bad thing for the Israelites. You're right, it really was. But, oh, well, go ahead and ask the next question. The story gets better. Okay, so question number two. What were some of the things that happened to the Philistines while they had the ark? Oh, these were really cool. God showed his power by making the people really sick. The statue of Dagon fell down, not once, but more than once. It even got broken. Yeah, so sickness and a broken statue. That's right. That's very good answers, Mr. Alligator. How about, how did the Philistines end up returning the ark to God? Uh, it was like a car that they put it in. Not quite a car. They didn't have those back then. Well, yeah, but what, what's that thing called? That 
It, uh, are you thinking of a cart? Yes, yes, a cart. And they had it pulled by uh, some, oh, some cows. Some cows pulled the cart with the ark. That's right. And do you remember, did they send anything else back with the ark? Uh, like some gold? Gold, yeah, they sent gold. Yeah, that's absolutely right. They sent a couple of different things that were golden gifts, basically kind of as an offering to try to appease this God who had afflicted them so much. Yeah, I think I'd be pretty scared too if all that stuff kept happening if I kept something in my house or city. Yeah, I'm sure they were a little frustrated, scared, and who knows what else by all of this that had gone on. Yeah, well, thanks for letting me join you. Remember, kids, nothing and no one is greater than God. Bye! Bye, Mr. Alligator. All right, kids and parents, here's what I would like you to do. The Ark of the Covenant was a very special thing for the Israelites. God gave them very specific ways, very specific instructions about how to build it and eventually what was to go inside of it. So I'm going to put here on the screen some scriptures that talk about how to build the Ark and what was to go inside of it. I would love for you and your family to read those passages together and then go ahead and draw a picture of the ark and the things that would have gone inside of it. Maybe discuss why would God want them to keep those things nearby. I'll give you a hint. He kind of talks about it in some of those passages. So thanks again for joining us this week in Bible class. I hope that you have enjoyed the story but more importantly, that you have learned more about God, about a God who dwells with us, and the fact that he is a mighty God who continues to care, not just for his people of Israel in the Old Testament, but for all people of the world, because he sent his son for all of us. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.